Namaste and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. In module number 6 on use of modern techniques in watershed management, in lecture number 26, today we will discuss about the applications of knowledge based models in watershed management. So, in this lecture some of the topics covered include knowledge based modeling, multi criteria decision analysis, fuzzy logic based modeling, fuzzy systems, applications of knowledge based systems in watershed management. Some of the important keywords knowledge based model, multi criteria decision analysis, fuzzy logic based modeling. So, as we discussed earlier say the modern techniques like uh, geography information systems, computer models, then uh, remote sensing, then decision support system all these things all these uh, models all these uh, modern models are very useful in the effective uh, management of uh, many many engineering problems say like watershed management or uh, water resource management etcetera. So, we have seen the applications of computer models or numerical models then uh, the ge geography information systems remote sensing and, and uh, decision support systems earlier. So, we can have uh, some specified system for various spe specific types of problems like um, uh, say irrigation management or the land use uh, management or, or crop management uh, related to watershed. We can combine this many of these modules together and then we can have a system called uh, or a model called uh, knowledge based models. So, these knowledge based models are uh, very useful to decide or to say to, to decide which way we have to do various management practices or which way we have to go for uh, various plans as far as watershed is concerned. So, actually this knowledge based models are also one way uh, say they are also decision support systems or decision support models, but uh, in the knowledge based models we are using the artificial intelligence techniques like fuzzy logic or the uh, uh, techniques like genetic algorithm or artif artificial neural networks etcetera. So, that is why uh, that uh, these kinds of models are generally called as knowledge based models. So, now let us look into various aspects of knowledge based models. So, here in this slide I have given some uh, say uh, information on knowledge based models. So, knowledge based uh, systems are computer systems that are programmed to imitate the human problem uh, solving uh, ability by means of artificial intelligence tools. So, uh, actually we can have a certain uh, artificial intelligence tools like um, uh, uh, fuzzy logic or the uh, uh, ANN or artificial neural network or um, uh, genetic operators or genetic algorithm very similar to the, uh, the, the human intelligence uh, type of systems. So, that uh, can imitate the uh, human problem very effectively. So, that way uh, the computer systems when it is uh, the models are made that way we call those kinds of models as knowledge based systems or knowledge based models. So, human reasoning uh, using natural language can be reproduced in knowledge based uh, systems through uh, various uh, artificial intelligence tools like a fuzzy logic. So, if this happens what will be the outcome? So, like that say uh, or um, between say between good and bad how the variation is it is not uh, very specific either good or bad, but between that what can happen. So, like that with this with uh, uh, human reasoning uh, kind of systems we can uh, uh, use uh, to have a knowledge based models. So, in knowledge based models uh, the knowledge can be uh, derived from uh, basic analysis or experts knowledge collected through uh, surveys and heuristic information from the field. So, this uh, knowledge based models can be obtained from um, the basic data analysis or experts knowledge or th through heuristic information uh, say related to that particular problems. So, experts knowledge and heuristic information related to the specific problems are generally stored in the form of rule base. So, depending upon the problem depending upon the, the watershed or area which we are dealing we can uh, generate uh, uh, specific rules and uh, then we can store these rules in a rule base and then using those rule base uh, we can um, uh, generate uh, scenarios or what, what, what can happen if this particular 
things uh, uh, is done. So, like that we can uh, create various scenarios. So, those types of uh, uh, models are uh, called uh, knowledge based uh, models. So, here further on knowledge based modeling, a knowledge base is an organized body of knowledge that provides a formal logical uh, specification for the uh, interpretation of information. So, say for example, if, if the, the watershed say uh, if, uh, if we, uh, the, the land what is available whether it is uh, uh, say suitable for say paddy cultivation or millet cultivation or um, peace cultivation. So, like that we can um, uh, uh, consider various information on the particular area and then uh, we can generate say the uh, the uh, suitability of lands uh, say depending upon the uh, various uh, details available. So, in the knowledge based modeling approach uh, uh, say uh, say for example, if watershed is concerned watershed assessment is a multi criteria evaluation in which uh, uh, knowledge of the experts is used to define the factors characterizing the watershed and the logic relations uh, between the factors. So, you can see that when we deal with uh, watershed assessment or watershed management, a number of criteria like uh, uh, the land use, then uh, water availability, then um, the, the, the present cropping pattern, the neighborhoods to the, the ponds or water bodies or neighborhoods to the, to the uh, transport systems. So, like that we have to consider various criteria so called uh, multi criteria and then based upon this we can derive certain logical relationships uh, using these factors and then uh, uh, say we can develop a knowledge based uh, model for the particular type of uh, problem. So, that way the knowledge base encapsulates the assessment criteria and the relationships in an explicit form so that they can be easily examined, modified or updated. So, depending upon the problems, so we can uh, create a, a, a say rule base um, based upon the database and then uh, that do, uh, rule base can be encapsulated um, uh, within the systems which uh, defines the various relationships and criteria and then based upon that um, we can uh, have a knowledge based model and that can be used to uh, say, uh, say uh, predict or to say that is yes, this particular land can be used for say this kind of cultivation or if say uh, what kind of supplementary irrigations to be to be generated uh, for the cultivation of particular crop uh, like that. So, that way a knowledge based modeling uh, uh, can be uh, done. So, now uh, let us look into various aspects of uh, knowledge based uh, systems. So, the knowledge base contains knowledge and experience for the subject domain. So, whatever we are dealing that is subject domain so like domain knowledge and uh, specifies the local relations uh, amongst topics of interest to an assessment. Say for example, if the assessment is uh, the whether particular crop is suitable for that particular land. So, then we have to consider the 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 uh, uh, the, ty the type of soil, then the 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 water availability, then uh, various other factors which we have to consider, or the domain knowledge which is required for that particular problems, and then uh, we can create the uh, knowledge base. So then, uh, inference engines performs knowledge based uh, approximate reasoning to draw conclusions about the uh, state of the systems. So, uh, we can uh, uh, generate uh, the inference engines and this inference engines um, uh, performs knowledge based approximations and then uh, based upon that uh, uh, we can uh, generate um, particular uh, scenarios or we can take particular decisions based upon this type of systems. So, by integrating knowledge based uh, uh, reasoning uh, into a GIS environment provide decision support for watershed management. So, as we discussed earlier say for example, if a geography information systems uh, say when we integrate this kinds of knowledge based uh, uh, models or knowledge based systems in, an, in a GIS environment. Uh, then uh, uh, we can see that uh, uh, so what is happening within the systems or what is happening for that particular problem all those with, with the given inputs and then generate output uh, we can easily visualize the various aspects and then uh, we can um, uh, go for particular decision according to the requirement. So, that way uh, the knowledge based model process uh, various uh, 
say uh, various um, uh, relationships uh, for that particular problems and then uh, that gives certain uh, uh, decisions or scenarios. So, that way uh, as I mentioned GIS applications uh, provide uh, database management, spatial analysis, uh, system interface and map display. So, when we integrate this knowledge based systems with the GIS, uh, say we can have the database management, uh, spatial analysis uh, like uh, spatial variation we can easily identify, then system interface say GIS itself is a system interface and then even we can generate various maps uh, for display. And then the assessment system allows users to evaluate the knowledge base for a specific uh, spatial data by, uh, database and view the results. So, uh, since when we integrate the, the knowledge base model or knowledge base systems within the GIS environment, so we can easily uh, see the say what is happening with the spatial variation or within the spatial database and then we can see within the GIS environment the results. So, that way uh, it is much easier, much useful for decision makers uh, say, uh, say like if this, this is done what will be happening. So, like that various um, decisions can be uh, easily uh, taken. So, now let us look into uh, the knowledge base structure. So, what is the structure of a uh, particular uh, knowledge base? So, knowledge base structure is a hierarchy of dependency networks. So, uh, say uh, depending upon the problems say uh, we have to go through various processes, various hierarchy of the various uh, uh, networks within the system. So, each network evaluates a specific proposition about the state of say for example, watershed if watershed condition. So, if this particular watershed or particular area of the watershed whether it is suitable for um, say paddy cultivation or any kind of cultivation or that particular crop then uh, it has to go through. Uh, uh, say a series of uh, the various networks and then each, each, each network is evaluated and then uh, we identify whether that is suitable or not. So, knowledge based structure is designed to address the issues concerned by the watershed managers uh, say for example, if you consider watershed and to reflect their opinions on the importance of each issue. So, in the knowledge based structure we can consider various relationships, various issues and then uh, we can say the, the uh, after effects if that particular thing is then what will happen. So, that uh, uh, if this is done what will, then what will happen. So, like that it will be uh, uh, given. So, that is uh, will be that will be very useful for the uh, watershed management, management or uh, say it will be useful to, for the decision makers. So, at the top of the hierarchy is the network uh, watershed conditions say for example, if you consider watershed then at the top of the hierarchy is the network watershed condition what is the condition of the watershed. For the proposition that overall condition of the watershed is suitable uh, for sustaining healthy populations of the uh, native. So, if you consider say for the, the living condition of particular the, the particular watershed, then uh, we consider the watershed condition whether it is deteriorated or it is um, very good condition or it is bad condition and then we can come up with uh, uh, various aspects uh, say related to particular uh, decisions uh, to be made with whether related to cropping pattern, land use or soil erosion or whatever type of problem uh, we are looking for. So, the watershed conditions are generally depends on two uh, lower level networks like um, uh, upland or overland conditions say, say as, as we discussed earlier the watershed we can uh, consider as overland and then the, the uh, stream or channel net uh, channel condition. So, uh, whenever we consider the watershed condition, so the two lower level networks uh, other than the overall watershed condition say two uh, levels which we have to consider is how is the overland uh, condition and the, the, the stream, net stream uh, condition. So, accordingly uh, we can uh, consider various aspects of the problem which we consider and then uh, we can come up with a uh, solution or some come up with a uh, say um, uh, scenario. So, in all these aspects when we deal with say for example, watershed management. So, we have to consider as we discussed various uh, criteria we have to consider uh, in the analysis. So, that way we can see that uh, uh, say this type of problems are very much uh, say uh, multi criteria based. So, we have to do a multi criteria decision analysis. So, MCDA or multi criteria decision analysis uh, very important. 
uh, in knowledge based uh, models. So, uh, simulation models of various hydrologic components of a watershed say for example, uh, rainfall runoff or soil moisture or the, the, uh, uh, the water sharing all these kinds of uh, components. So, then integrated with uh, artificial intelligence tools like fuzzy logic. So, as to make use of experts knowledge and uh, heuristic information in decision making process. So, uh, this uh, is used to help the end users to arrive at the best suitable decisions related to irrigation management. Say for example, if the watershed is concerned if we are dealing with irrigation management. So, we can consider various hydrologic components uh, of that particular watershed and then we can come up with yes, uh, this is the best uh, irrigation management practice or this is the best cropping pattern or uh, say depending upon the requirement of the crops, this is the, 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 the uh, possible irrigation management uh, schedule like that. So, then irrigation assessment and management as I mentioned, so that way is a multi criteria uh, uh, problem and uh, then we have to go for multi criteria decision analysis. Uh, so, uh, in this uh, we have to use the knowledge uh, based system. So, knowledge based systems uh, is very useful for uh, multi criterion decision analysis. So, MCD or multi criterion decision analysis in which the land suitability say for example, uh, if land suitability criteria is to be considered, water availability, uh, irrigation requirements uh, and uh, various uh, other criteria to be evaluated. So, generally the objective function can be uh, or objective can be maximize the agricultural production. Same when we are looking for irrigation management for the particular watershed. So, uh, say if we consider MCD or multi criteria decision analysis, we can uh, say our objective or objective function can be uh, we have to maximize the agricultural production. So, accordingly we can uh, go for the, the uh, irrigation management or the various uh, scheduling. So, that way uh, MCDA or multi criteria decision analysis models are used in irrigation management to identify areas that can be irrigated and then uh, water release during different time periods and then best suitable uh, cropping pattern for the considered area. So, like that when we deal with the MCDA multi criteria decision analysis, uh, we can identify uh, say the, the, the water release for different uh, seasons or different time periods and then uh, what is the best uh, suitable cropping pattern and then uh, what is the irrigation schedule. So, like that uh, MCDA uh, is uh, very much uh, part of any kinds of uh, knowledge based systems um, which we can develop for uh, say uh, water particular watershed management uh, problem. So, now uh, let us look into a particular uh, say, say knowledge based systems for watershed management we, when we consider. So, this flow chart shows a, a typical type of um, knowledge based uh, uh, model for uh, watershed management. So, um, say uh, if we consider watershed or water related issues uh, uh, within the watershed, then we have to go for hydrological modeling say for example, we can uh, uh, find out the rainfall runoff using soil conservation current number based model and uh, say once the runoff is determined um, say this runoff also depends upon the soil moisture balance and then uh, crop water requirement and then irrigation requirement. So, then uh, uh, based upon that once the runoff is predicted then we can identify how much uh, water is available for that um, uh, particular area and then um, if uh, sufficient water is not available then uh, we can think over how we can go for uh, har water harvesting. So, what is the water harvesting potential uh, for that particular area and then um, say if you use, use a fussy membership approach say which we will be discussing in the coming slides what is fussy logic and all those things we will be discussing in detail. So, if you consider fussy membership approach then we can uh, use those approach to identify uh, what will be whether the land particular area or land is suitable uh, for that particular crop and then uh, we will uh, get a spatial temporal multi criteria decision uh, system or multi criteria decision model for identifying the most suitable uh, cropping zones uh, for that uh, particular area. So, based upon this uh, approach uh, one of my PhD student Reshmi Devi in 2008 uh, developed a model in department of civil engineering IIT Bombay uh, a, a specified uh, knowledge based uh, systems um, for watershed management and this um, results were published in the uh, general irrigation drainage uh, American society of civil engineers. So, this way uh, a typical knowledge based systems consists say various components for the particular uh, 
problem we have to we may have to use sometimes some specific specified models say for example rain fault run off model and then we have to consider say the say for example land suitability and then the water requirement and all those things we can combine together integrate together uh, within a gis environment and so that that becomes a uh, knowledge based model and that can be effectively utilized say for example for the land use um, uh, suitability analysis or the the uh, say uh, most suitable uh, uh, cropping zone identification for that particular uh, watershed uh, uh, like that. So, that way uh, as I mentioned this fuzzy logic uh, systems um, which is uh, uh, say used in many problems la for the la last two, two decades um, that can be effectively utilized in watershed management also. So, let us now look into uh, uh, important uh, aspects of uh, fuzzy logic uh, uh, and uh, fuzzy, fuzzy based systems and then related uh, modeling techniques. So, this fuzzy logic uh, systems uh, say it was first presented by Sade uh, uh, say in the mid 1960s at the University of California at Berkeley and he developed uh, uh, the fuzzy logic as a way of uh, processing data. So, by considering various problems uh, say uh, how to process this data say between uh, various uh, uh, variation within the in the uh, parameters. So, later on uh, he introduced the idea of uh, uh, partial set membership. So, say if uh, within the one uh, say variation if the variation is say say for example, uh, good to bad. So, say if we cannot identify okay, certain class is totally good or certain class is totally bad in between what happens. Say, say then that kind of um, say partial set membership uh, uh, this Dr. Sadek introduced and then uh, he defined uh, the uh, fuzzy systems as um, uh, say the system which is not clear or distinct or uh, precise. So, a system which is not very clear or we cannot say that this is exactly this is the fashion or it is not so precise. So, that kind of system we can call it as a fuzzy system and then he defined the fuzzy logic as uh, a multi valued uh, logic that allows intermediate values to be defined between conventional evaluations like a true or false, yes or no, high or low etcetera. So, that way uh, Sardek uh, defined the fuzzy logic as uh, uh, an intermediate value or intermediate values uh, between conventional evaluations like um, say uh, which is exact like a true false between true and false what is there or between high and low how is the variations. So, like that uh, so the system which is not so clear or distinct uh, or precise that is defined as uh, the within, within the fuzzy say systems or fuzzy uh, logic. So, actually that way fuzzy we are not uh, uh, actually dealing with uh, pro probability. So, probability generally deals with uncertainty and likelihood of various parameters say for example, if rainfall may or may not happen. So, it is uncertainty uh, of that particular parameters, but in fuzzy logic um, uh, say uh, fuzzy logic general deals with the ambiguity and vagueness. So, whether uh, say for example, if particular land is there whether that land uh, if uh, say some particular land we can specifically say it is um, not at all useful say for some party cultivation, but uh, say some land will be uh, very suitable for party cultivation, but in between say if it is there. Uh, then uh, say how to identify. So, that kind of problems uh, we can easily deal with uh, the fuzzy logic uh, based uh, systems. Uh, so, now as I mentioned this uh, fuzzy logic is um, uh, same is say a system which we can utilize where vagueness or the, the we cannot uh, exactly define uh, what is the situation. So, that way the fuzzy logic is based on intuition uh, and uh, judgment. So, we have to see the what is the, the uh, say for example, for the when we deal with particular problem what kind of intuition we are getting or what kind of judgment uh, we are having. So, uh, uh, that way actually it is not uh, based upon specified mathematical models uh, say, but uh, say we have to see that um, with uh, our intuition and judgment we have to come up with uh, 
say uh, a methodology uh, in fuzzy logic. And then uh, fuzzy logic provides a smooth transition between members and non-members. So, if the, the member between member and non-member means if uh, the what is the decision is yes or no. So, what is there in between? So, that is uh, we say that the transition between uh, members and non-members or uh, the between say high and low. So, what is there? So, that kind of uh, transition. So, that way it is uh, relatively simple and this fuzzy logic is relatively simple, fast and adaptive and uh, uh, th then um, it is less sensitive to systems uh, fluctuations uh, and then uh, say uh, according to the problem we can um, uh, define or design certain rules. So, that when uh, it is a rule based uh, uh, operation we can um, define and then it can be implemented uh, say uh, for uh, design objectives or uh, like what is difficult to express mathematically uh, in terms of linguistic or descriptive rules. So, Mathematically, if we cannot have precise type of rules or type of uh, say uh, definition for that particular problem, uh, then uh, but it may be able to we can put it in terms of linguistic or descriptive rules. So, there uh, fuzzy logic we can uh, directly uh, utilize. So, uh, uh, that way uh, say if we consider say for example, conventional quiz sets are binary, but uh, fuzzy logic is um, say the, the variation in between is considered. So, now an element uh, either belongs to the set or doesn't. So, generally uh, crisp or the conventional set is say particular thing is concerned whether it uh, belongs or it does not belong, but uh, say like a true and false. So, that way uh, if we assign true is 0, then for false we can assign 1. Uh, so, like that, but in uh, fuzzy logic where, where for the type of problems where it is not possible to specifically say true or false, but uh, something lay say uh, in between. So, that means it may can vary from 0 to 1, but it may not be uh, same exactly as 0 uh, or 1 uh, depending upon the uh, problem. So, like that say if we consider the, the, the problem. So, uh, say now let us see say here you can see that in this uh, uh, figure say this uh, A, B, C uh, th these are all subsets of this particular problem. So, then if it is specified specifically the things are in this then um, it is um, uh, A or in this subset it is B or in this is C, but in between if then what happens. So, that way uh, fuzzy logic uh, can be uh, considered. So, now let us look at what is fuzzy sets. So, fuzzy sets uh, we have to consider a set of, set of de details within the for that particular problem. So, this allows elements to be partially in a set as I mentioned here this particular set which we consider. So, allows elements to be partially in a set. Each element is uh, given a degree of membership in a set. Then a membership function is the relationship between the values of an element and its degree of uh, membership uh, in a set. Say for example, if the variation is uh, say uh, this particular function mu, so then uh, this is negative and this side is positive. So, then uh, uh, negative positive then or large uh, medium small. So, in between that how the, uh, the variations are taking place. So, that way uh, we can consider for the uh, particular problem uh, which we uh, consider. So, that way we can consider the uh, fuzzy sets. So, now uh, in this kinds of problems we have to consider the, the membership uh, say whether it is in which subset or whether between those sets. So, like that uh, we have to consider the membership membership functions. So, here the details of the membership functions are given in this slides. So, the memberships generally can be crisp membership functions. So, crisp membership functions say for example, this mu which we consider either 1 or 0. So, exactly 1 or 0. Uh, so, uh, say for example, particular number greater than 10 so that uh, we can define like this. But as far as fuzzy membership functions are concerned, the membership value here is not exactly 1 or 0. Uh, uh, but it is varying. So, the degree of truth of a statement can range between uh, 0 and 1 and uh, the linguistic variables are used for um, uh, to describe this fuzzy measures uh, what is happening. So, examples of uh, fuzzy measures include say uh, the, the particular pro, uh, say uh, problem is, is close say like a water body is close to the, to the agricultural land or it is um, a medium uh, heavy say it is uh, uh, heavy light big small smart fast slow hot cold uh, 
uh, called a tall uh, short like that. So, uh, li on linguistic terms, linguistic variables we can use uh, say uh, between these parameters and then we can uh, specify. So, that when uh, in the fuzzy membership functions these um, values uh, say it is not crisp like 0 or 1, but it will be uh, varying uh, between the, the this um, uh, um, parameters. So, now uh, say we can see that that way uh, we need to define the, the lo fuzzy logic operations. So, uh, say if we consider two uh, sets uh, say whether how that sets are behaving. So, accordingly we can um, say uh, design the problem. So, now in the fuzzy logic operations say for example, we say that to the union say for example, if this is subset A is subset B then uh, the union is maximum mu A x mu B x as shown in this figure. And then if you consider only the intersection, so for example, minimum of mu a x mu b x. So, this is the intersection which we consider and then uh, the complement the, the negation of the specified membership function. So, if you do not consider this area, but on the other two sides area if you consider then the uh, complement. So, like that fuzzy logic uh, we can define particular fuzzy logic operations and then we can consider the, the uh, particular uh, problems uh, which we uh, we are dealing. Uh, now, say this fuzzy logic as I mentioned uh, say uh, in most of the natural problems which we consider like um, uh, say uh, if, if you consider the watershed uh, uh, management. So, then uh, the, the particular area is concerned uh, crop suitability or uh, irrigation management. Uh, so, it's like that various uh, problems. Um, so, we cannot uh, specifically exactly say that is this is the, the way, but it can vary between uh, say yes or no or um, false or right or um, uh, say uh, like that between uh, the, the these parameters vary. So, that way uh, fuzzy logic uh, uh, has uh, got a la large number of applications say for example, in watershed management. Of course, this fuzzy logic was developed for various other types of problems. So, some of the applications uh, I have listed here. Uh, like um, right smoothness control, uh, then um, uh, in uh, all other kinds of engineering like electric engineering, electronics engineering, uh, mechanical engineering like that. Then braking systems, high performance drives, air conditioning systems, digital image processing, washing machines, pattern recognition, remote sensing, video game artificial intelligence, uh, graphics controllers uh, for automated uh, policy, police uh, uh, sketches uh, like that. So, large number of applications uh, we, you can see now in literature uh, related to fuzzy logic. Now, since our uh, main uh, industry is here related to watershed management problems. So, watershed related application also large number of applications uh, we can see in literature uh, like um, uh, in modeling rainfall runoff processes and then erosive soil measurements then hydroecological modeling uh, or watershed then flood forecasting and water quality problems uh, cropping and irrigation management. So, like that watershed related um, or watershed management related number of problems also uh, we can utilize this fuzzy logic um, uh, say since many of the this natural problems related to watershed um, uh, problems are very much uh, say fuzzy in nature. So, that way we can uh, utilize the this fuzzy logic or fuzzy sets or fuzzy based uh, uh, model for uh, watershed uh, management uh, related problems. So, now let us look um, say this fuzzy logic the concepts we have now uh, discussed. So, now let us look what are the advantages and limitations of uh, fuzzy logic uh, and uh, uh, say uh, with respect to the application what we have seen some there are certain advantages and some limitations. So, here uh, some of the advantages uh, are like allow it uh, the fuzzy logic allows the use of vague linguistic terms uh, in the rules. So, that based upon that uh, we can uh, say come up with um, uh, certain decision for that particular problem. And that way uh, we do not need any specific the exact mathematical models for that particular problem. So, based upon the linguistic variations we can uh, make uh, decisions or make we can make modeling. And uh, these are rule based and a descriptive type. So, most of the fuzzy logic systems are rule based. And then some of the limitations include this is difficult to estimate a membership function. So, most of the problems say what kind of membership is there accordingly it is exactly to define or to estimate the membership is uh, difficult. There are many ways of uh, interpreting fuzzy rules. So, uh, say 
the term itself is fuzzy. So, uh, say we can interpret also in different ways. So, uh, we have to uh, the, 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 the correctness of the decision or the we will have better decisions or better um, uh, say interpretation if we use uh, say, um, the best possible uh, uh, kind of system. And combining the outputs of several fuzzy rules and uh, uh, defuzzifying the outputs. So, we have to first uh, uh, see the fuzzification of the systems and then uh, based upon the uh, rules um, um, or the uh, say the, the in terms of linguistic um, systems and then we have to again come back and defuzzify the output. So, that way uh, we have to go through a certain procedure. So, these are some of the limitations as far as uh, fuzzy logic uh, type of systems are concerned. So, now uh, let us look um, what are the important components as far as fuzzy logic is concerned. So, this slide sh shows the basic components of uh, fuzzy logic uh, systems. Uh, so, here first of all of course, data input is required based upon the available input only uh, we, we um, consider the, uh, the particular problems and then come up with a uh, uh, certain uh, decision. So, first is the inputs, so data inputs and then uh, uh, based upon the problem uh, say we uh, consider say certain types of models to fuzzify the system. So, that is called the fuzzification and then uh, uh, we consider the fuzzy rules, the uh, base rules uh, for applic applicable for that particular problems. So, based upon that uh, uh, we will be getting the fuzzy outputs. And then, uh, since to the to normalize and to for the the understanding of the problem, again we have to do a defuzzification, and then uh, we will be getting the uh, output. So this way, uh, in a fuzzy system, the basic there are um, uh, five uh, basic components, and the, uh, the, that way a systematic um, uh, uh, modeling or systematic operation uh, op operations are possible in a fuzzy based uh, modeling. So, now let us uh, look into the that uh, the, the three two three components for the falsification, fuzzy based rule and defalsification uh, some of the important aspects let us look into. So, falsification uh, uh, means it is a falsifier, falsifier converts a crisp input into uh, fuzzy variables. Say for example, say uh, if you consider the land use um, say uh, for particular crop, say it is not it is the possible uh, 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 crisp uh, inputs are uh, not suitable uh, then uh, uh, suitable. So, in between uh, we can have um, uh, say uh, less suitable, moderate suitable, uh, less suitable. So, uh, uh, like that. So, that way this falsifier converts each um, uh, piece of input data to uh, various degrees of uh, membership. So, the membership function uh, is a graphical representation as shown in this figure, representation of the magnitude of uh, participation. So, like um, the land suitability, it is uh, suitable or not suitable, then in between we can have less suitable, moderate suitable uh, like that. Then uh, the definition of the membership functions must uh, reflect uh, the designer's knowledge and then uh, provides smooth transition between member and uh, non members of a fuzzy set. So, uh, that way we have to do this uh, fuzzification. So, it should provide smooth transition between a member and non members of the fuzzy set. Then typical shapes of the membership functions uh, we can have a Gaussian variation say Gaussian variation like this or we can have a uh, trapezoidal variation as shown uh, here or we can have a simple triangular variation also. So, uh, and that way uh, this uh, kinds of uh, variations we can use uh, in the the falsification uh, processes. Then uh, the second one is the fuzzy base rule. So, this fuzzy base rule is actually the important component in any of these kinds of uh, modeling. So, this fuzzy base rule includes all possible fuzzy relationships uh, between inputs and outputs. So, we have seen that inputs are there and then corresponding outputs will be there. So, this uh, fuzzy relations we can generate uh, relations based upon this um, uh, inputs and outputs. So, so, this include all possible fuzzy relationships between these inputs and outputs. So, rules are expressed in the if then format that means, if this then say if this particular check dam is constructed then how much will be the, the flooding problem or how much the area can be reated. So, like that if this is done then what will happen. So, if then format. 
then uh, we can uh, uh, the rules reflect experts decisions so uh, say this uh, the whatever the the rules which we generate based upon that the final decisions made so that way this should uh, reflect the experts decisions and then rules are tabulated uh, as fuzzy words so uh, like uh, say for example if a particular person is there uh, we can uh, by looking to that particular person uh, his uh, actions or his um, uh, say uh, uh, condition we can say that whether he is healthy and then uh, we can say that uh, he is whether somewhat healthy less healthy or unhealthy so this can be uh, based upon say various uh, conditions like uh, whether uh, he is how much tall or whether he is fat or he is thin or um, say uh, his uh, overall uh, health conditions so uh, say, say for example we can generate uh, a particular fuzzy base rule say for example related like to healthy or unhealthy say health is concerned if height is tall and weight is medium then we can say healthy so like that if then relationships we can form and say for example if height is small and then um, uh, weight is um, uh, more than unhealthy so like that we can uh, have um, uh, say we can generate various uh, fuzzy base rule so this is related to the the health of a person but say for example related to um, uh, the the crop suitability particular area or land suitability we can consider various aspects like if water is available then uh, irrigation can be done so that this particular crop say like a paddy is possible so like that we can generate the fuzzy based rules so that will be uh, very useful uh, in uh, in this fuzzy based uh, modeling so that way as uh, shown here we can have various uh, uh, say conditions uh, say like uh, fuzzy based uh, decision as shown in the slides uh, so the fuzzy based uh, decisions say we can give various weightages here and then function is shown here so this is related to unhealthy less healthy uh, somewhat healthy or healthy so like that so uh, so most of these fuzzy based rules are based upon uh, if this is the condition then what is the uh, the situation so like that so then third component is the the defussification so once the the input is there and then uh, uh, fussification is done and then fussy based upon the fussy rules uh, uh, say we are now going getting a output uh, which is in the the, in the uh, not understandable for a normal person so we have to defussify the system so defussification uh, as shown in this here converts the resulting fuzzy outputs from the fuzzy inference engine to a number so generally in, in computer terms it will be represented in terms of a number and uh, this number will be uh, showing how the variation is taking place whether it can be between 0 to 1 or whatever it is then converting the output uh, fuzzy variable into a unique number so that unique number represents say whether that person is uh, healthy less healthy somewhat healthy or that particular area is uh, suitable less suitable or more suitable uh, so like that so number of um, uh, defalsification methods are available uh, in literature like weighted average conditions maximum membership average ma maximum membership or center of gravity or that particular uh, say the area triangular or trapezoidal uh, like that that variation so these different methods are there anyway uh, so we, we are not going to the details of this but um, uh, the defalsification is required uh, when we use the fuzzy logic and that gives the uh, particular output the system which we are looking for that particular uh, problem so that way uh, defalsification is also uh, very important so now uh, what we are discussing is the fuzzy logic and uh, then uh, uh, say the structure of a fuzzy logic systems and then how the fuzzy logic is working and then uh, uh, its applications that is what we are discussing so far so now uh, today's our main topic is knowledge based uh, model so uh, related to uh, say watershed management how we can develop a knowledge based uh, knowledge based knowledge based model say uh, uh, related to watershed management so that way uh, now further uh, in the coming few slides we will discuss a particular more knowledge based uh, model uh, for uh, related to watershed management 
So, let us look into this particular model developed by my PhD student Deshmi Devi uh, and presented in her thesis not based model for supplementary irrigation assessment in agricultural uh, watershed. So, uh, here um, uh, say she developed a fuzzy rule based inference system for land suitability evaluation. Uh, so, for if a particular uh, land is or particular watershed say uh, for, for uh, particular crops say how effectively uh, that is say suitable less suitable or more suitable like that. And then uh, 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 she developed a um, spatial temporal multi criteria decision analysis model uh, for SM, SMCDA model for identifying the uh, scope for uh, supplementary irrigation. So, uh, based upon uh, this fuzzy rule based system, she developed a model uh, to identify uh, whether if we consider the particular watershed uh, uh, and then its scoping pattern, its um, uh, irrigation availability, and uh, so whether we have to go for supplementary irrigation, and then uh, how uh, effectively we can do within the uh, the context of a node based model. So, that way model has been developed and then also she de developed a graphical user interface for this uh, particular model. So, in this particular model uh, for this node based model, 5 steps uh, are there in the model development. First one is the falsification of the attributes, then estimation of the intermediate land suitability index, then generation of the fuzzy rule base, then aggregation of the rules uh, like fuzzy output in terms of uh, fuzzy suitability. Uh, classes uh, like um, uh, less suitable, suitable, more suitable um, uh, like that and then uh, defalsification. So, the basic steps falsification, estimation intermediate uh, land suitability index, then generation of fuzzy rules and aggregation of the rules and uh, uh, defalsification. So, these were the essential steps for this particular um, model. Then fuzzy rule based inference system. So, here the problem with a large number of attributes say for example, if a particular watershed or particular area whether we have we want to identify whether that particular area is suitable for particular cropping. Uh, so, we have to consider uh, uh, various aspects uh, like um, uh, the uh, average for the particular area average number of dry days, proximity of uh, water body. Uh, so, this is related to water related issues, then elevation with respect to the nearest water body, then land related uh, issues like uh, land use, soil texture, terrain slope, uh, soil depth, drainage density, linear density, then soil related issues like pH, then electrical conductivity, salinity etcetera, then uh, uh, climate related like rainfall, temperature, uh, proximity to roads. So, then based upon this FSE operations uh, related to water related issues which gives the water potential and then uh, from this the land use uh, related issues, then uh, the weighted aggregation related to soil, then related to the terrain and the weighted aggregation related to the soil gives the fertility, uh, then uh, uh, various other attributes also ca can be considered. So, now based upon this fuzzy rule based uh, inference system uh, has been uh, developed and uh, so this is the overall structure of the uh, model and then defalsification and then from that we can get the particular uh, uh, the, the uh, decision or particular suitability. So, the, the here she considered hierarchical classification and then uh, she considered both the land potential and the water potential for that particular problem. So, the main issues are related to land potential, uh, water potential, uh, so that a suitable crop, in, crop index or uh, say crop suitability uh, or land suitability for that particular crop can be uh, identified. So, this system was based upon the fuzzy rule based inference system. So, as far as falsification is concerned as we discussed earlier, the attribute values are mapped between 0 and 1 and then two types of attributes like thematic attributes for land potential, uh, unique membership value for each class, then continuously expressed uh, attributes for land potential, uh, semantic Im import uh, membership function, then asymmetric uh, left or asymmetric right or optimal range. So, more details of this uh, you can see in the general irrigation drainage paper published, um, so the reference will be given later uh, by us. Then uh, 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 the, the next step is the intermediate land suitability index. So, here the weighted aggregation of the attribute membership values are used and attributes like uh, he, so here uh, she used um, SATI's uh, relative importance scales to identify the uh, intermediate land suitability index. 
and then based upon that relative importance is assumed uh, based on literature, field observation and heuristic information. And then uh, this gives uh, intermediate um, land, is, land uh, suitability index in th three suitability classes like good, moderate and not suitable uh, based on the land and the uh, water potential. So, this, uh, these are the details as far as the intermediate land suitability index in this particular knowledge based model. Then uh, the, the fussy rule base and aggregation of the rules are generated. Uh, so, suitability criteria is uh, based upon in the form of if then rules in terms of intermediate suitability indices like if land use is good and water potential is good and the terrain is good and physical uh, chemical characters is good and then other parameters are good then the area is excellent. So, like that the system is made. And then another scenario if land use is good and water potential is moderate and terrain is moderate then and physical chemical characteristics is moderate and other parameters are moderate then the area is moderate. And the third one if land use is not suitable and water potential is not suitable and terrain is suitable and physical chemical characteristics is not suitable and the parameters are not suitable then the area is not suitable. So, like that if then rules uh, rule, fussy rule base were generated. So, this uh, uh, we, we gener generated the fuzzy output in terms of 5 suitability classes for this model like excellence whether the area is excellence, good, moderate, less suitable and uh, not suitable. And then next step is uh, defacification as I discussed earlier. So, this convert the fuzzy output into a single uh, volume land suitability index. So, uh, here maximum centroid method is considered so the, as shown in this uh, uh, figure. So, now uh, based upon this uh, say in using this model we can generate the best suitable crop map. So, relative importance and land suitability index is given. So, three cases case one is land suitability in, uh, index of existing crop. Uh, so, that is uh, uh, less than another crop of higher priority. So, then higher priority crop is selected. So, this is one case. Uh, then uh, case two is a land suitability index of the existing crop is less than another crop of lesser priority. And then change in the uh, cropping pattern if, if less suitability or not suitable for the existing crop. Then third case is if land suitability index is same for more than one potential crop if less suitable or not suitable for the existing crop and if relative importance of the existing crop then the uh, and the other crop then a change in the cropping pattern is proposed and then it is replaces the existing crop with a higher priority one. So, like that various uh, systems were made in this particular models. So, uh, this model uh, the details are given in a flow chart this is special temporal multi criteria decision analysis model for irrigation feasibility analysis. So, here uh, first we had to assess the irrigation requirement then runoff availability then uh, runoff versus irrigation requirement. So, this gives the water deficit periods then uh, land suitability it is coming from the first year logic. So, runoff versus priority based irrigation requirement then irrigable areas we can identify and then outsource water requirement for different suitability classes whether we have to go for the further uh, the uh, supplement irrigation uh, like that we can and uh, decide uh, using this uh, model. So, these details of this models are available by in this uh, no, in the paper published in 2010 uh, titled the uh, knowledge based uh, model for supplement irrigation assessment in agriculture watersheds general of irrigation drainage ASC 2010 volume 136 uh, pages 376 to 382. So, uh, let us have a, a brief look into one case study related to this model which is uh, done by Dashmi Devi in her thesis. So, the location is the uh, Harsul watershed and the area is 10.9 square kilometer and the principal crops in this uh, uh, area are paddy and finger millet. So, this is the watershed area. So, here uh, based upon the various input data, various databases were generated like uh, heuristic information and field observation related to attributes, attribute suitability for different crops, crop uh, priority and agriculture practices, land suitability criteria. So, this is done in the heuristic informations and then map layers related to drainage map, uh, contour map, then a soil map, pH map, map showing spatial variation, no electrical conducted salinity etcetera were generated and then also land use map, drainage density map, then proximity to water body, proximity to settlement. So, all these details uh, were uh, um, generated uh, in the database so that this fuzzy based system uh, modeling can be done. And then hydrometeorological data related to rainfall, stream flow, temperature, relative humidity, sunshine duration, wind speed all these were col uh, co collected 
and then using the earlier described knowledge based model uh, the modeling has been done. And uh, so, the, the for the uh, say land suitability related uh, so for this watershed say for example, uh, the SESCN uh, 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 soil moisture um, uh, simulation model has been used for the runoff uh, generation for the given condition. So, this shows the outputs. And then uh, uh, say, say for example, year 2002 which is a dry year we can identify how much is the, the, the water available uh, say and then uh, say for paddy field or finger mill how much is the water requirements and then uh, this is the rainfall hydrograph and then uh, we can identify how much is the uh, irrigation requirement and then accumulation uh, like that. So, that is uh, this all generated using the uh, particular model. And then uh, say irrigation requirement the household watershed uh, say for example, 4 years 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004 were generated. So, irrigation requirement non agricultural area, then uh, finger millet uh, no irrigation, then paddy field how say with 50 mm requirement, 100 mm requirement or 150 mm requirements. And then uh, based upon that uh, best suitable cropping zones in household watershed has been generated. So, this yellow shows the area suitable for paddy field and then uh, this red shows non agricultural area and this um, uh, violet this shows the finger millet suitable and non suitable for paddy uh, or finger millet. So, this way we can generate the best suitable uh, cropping zones. So, this shows the land suit, uh, suitability for paddy, uh, land suitability for finger millet. So, um, uh, the suitability classes and range of land suitability index is given here. Uh, say percentage area wise uh, related to paddy and uh, finger millet. So, that way we can generate uh, the using this knowledge based model we can generate identify the land suitability uh, for particular crop uh, and then um, say which, which of the area we are most suitable or more less suitable. So, like that we can identify. So, now to finally, to conclude say many decision making and problem solving tasks are too easy to solve. So, this fuzzy logic can be used for th this purpose and knowledge based model shows the irrigation requirement for the predicted rainfall uh, pre uh, and predicted rainfall helps to choose adopt appropriate crops and irrigation management plans for the uh, given area. So, these are some of the important references used in uh, for today's lecture. Uh, so, uh, then uh, before closing uh, some tutorial questions, critically study the applications of knowledge based systems for various water resource management problems, study various case studies available in literature. So, these details you can obtain from the internet. Study the role of knowledge based modeling in integrated uh, water resource management. So, how we can effectively utilize a knowledge based model. Then uh, some self evaluation questions, describe the features of typical knowledge based models. Illustrate the requirements of knowledge based uh, systems, describe typical knowledge based systems for watershed management, illustrate the fuzzy logic operators used in typical uh, fuzzy logic, what are the important components of fuzzy logic systems. So, these all these questions you can answer by going through today's lecture. So, if you assignment questions, describe the structure of a knowledge based systems, what are the important features of multi criteria decision analysis, illustrate the features of fuzzy logic based on systems. Describe applications, advantages and limitations of fuzzy logic, illustrate a typical knowledge based model for watershed management. So, all these questions you can answer by going through today's lecture and one unsolved problem critically study the a typical knowledge based model for a uh, for the water and land management in the watershed. So, for your watershed area study the scope of development of knowledge based model considering rainfall, various crops, land use, land suitability, uh, water requirements. Uh, etcetera. So, today we considered uh, uh, the knowledge based systems for watershed management, we discussed the fuzzy logic systems and then connecting to that how we can generate knowledge based models. So, that way we can see that this knowledge based models are very useful in uh, watershed management. So, with this lecture the uh, say the, uh, the particular uh, module on the modern uh, systems uh, for watershed management. Uh, the module number 6 is over. So, now we will uh, discuss various other aspects of uh, watershed management issues. Thank you.